Okay. All right, greetings everybody. I'm in the garden again, and I'm gonna make a video to talk about consciousness, which just happens to be one of my favorite subjects here. Gardening consciousness. So not often that uh, you hear those two terms put together, but um, so bear with me here because it's not like um, I figured everything out <laughs> when it comes to um, consciousness. I don't know that anybody has and ever will figure it all out due to some uh, pretty obvious constraints. The eye can't see the eye, the finger can't point at itself. Huh? But um, I'll, I'm going to share with you some of the um, some of the things that I've been thinking about recently. And so, um, overall, the, um, in a, from a general point of view, people define consciousness as uh, the state of being aware of fill in the blank. Awareness, the, the capacity of the of a human being to being aware or any being of for that matter <laughs> of being aware of itself and the environment that it is in so this it doesn't say very much really because uh, being aware you know what does that mean being awake aware you could you could have two people in front of you and they're both conscious beings, they're both conscious, they're both aware, but to what extent are they aware? And what does it mean to be aware? How does one become aware? And uh, what are we aware of in the first place? And how does this relate to the garden? <laughs> Okay, there's a plane in the background. I hope it won't make too much noise here. So, having, having uh, reflected and pondered this for a while, and I and it and it's going to be like a lifetime quest. But I'm at the point where I'm uh, contemplating defining consciousness for myself as being the interplay of four different factors, four different things. I'll go really quickly through them. As, uh, one of them is the, um, obviously the, the influence of the self, of the, uh, the I inside of, uh, deep inside within, the I of I, you know, the you that makes you, you, deep inside, the spiritual self, the eternal presence that you are you, okay, that is a uh, very important aspect in consciousness. Um, the brain chemistry and everything related to that. Um, I will, I'm going to talk a little bit more about it um, after I finish here my definition, but uh, I certainly can't go into all the details. There's way too much. And um, a lot of it is speculative too, and it's, it's like um, correlations and not necessarily causations is what this whole materialistic science is about, you know, as far as I'm concerned. So, the I inside the spiritual, the spirit self, 
the brain chemistry and here I put in the gut bacteria the microbes that are living inside of you also have a role to play in consciousness in human consciousness the uh, being aware of the self and the environment and uh, and four is the external factors in the um, material but mostly non-material realms the uh, the non-corporeal entities things like um, what people call God the archangels the angels the demigods the jinns the uh, the demons the lower vibrational beings uh, include like other spiritual beings the uh, including like what the shamans call plant spirits the beings inside the plants um, thought forms archons egregores those things that are uh, ideas you know things that are maybe not living beings per se but exist in the non-material realms that can influence you like ideas thought forms so that th that that is a uh, the fourth element is the influence of the uh, non-corporeal entities okay so the interplay between the spiritual self, the self, the I, the brain chemistry, the gut bacteria, and the non-corporeal entity, entities, all of these, how they interact, impact your awareness of, of yourself and the world around you, your reality, what you perceive as being real so um, if we take them one by one um, there's the brain chemistry is very complex you know uh, the science of it all there's the psychoactive substances um, that some people call there's a class of them called anthrogens basically um, it's the uh, chemicals in your brain that uh, generate the divine within it's like a uh, doorway to the divine uh, there's the um, different types of psychoactive substances there's the uh, liger uh, lysergic amines the tryptamines the phenyl ethyl amines the cannabinoids like the marijuana so there's um, better carbolines synthetics um, things like um, there are many many different types the morphine types and the uh, but the amines are uh, constitute a large part something something amine you know like LSD DMT mescaline uh, there's the tropanes the alkaloids and um, like the datura plants like atropine scopolamine these these ones they're a different class but they're also psychoactive there's um all of these uh can be generated inside uh the human body from precursors and uh some of these precursors are found in plants and then um, some uh are generated from the bacteria in our guts and there's an interaction there between what's going on in the guts and the bacteria what they're doing and what we uh, what we take in as far as plant alkaloids and uh, substances uh, psychoactive substances and plants now there's um, for a while the a lot of the uh, science denied the, that the body can produce like those anthrogens but now they're they're pretty much like agreeing on the fact that the the human body can produce DMT which is one of those 
androgens that uh, put us in communication with the divine and the and the non-corporeal entities. <laughs> um, and some of like this DMT and this um, there's another important one called bufo tenine. Bufo comes from frog. The origin um, because um, frogs on their skin can produce this uh, psychoactive chemical. If you lick certain toads, you could get high. Which is probably why the uh, witches they would uh, put, you know, toads and frogs like in their brew. <laughs> for magical purposes, right? So these uh, DMT um, can be formed by the serotonin and tryptamines inside the, uh, the body uh, with help of a certain enzyme. I won't get into too much of the detail, but it's like, it's called INMT en enzyme. It's just a short for a long scientific name. These D, uh, this DMT that is uh, synthesized in your body with an enzyme binds to these serotonin receptors that uh, that are in the brain and your nervous system like the vagal nerve which is very important nerve linking the uh, gut back the, the the gut microbiome to your brain and to basically your entire body oh, the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system so these, um, this is regulates the these receptors, serotonin receptors regulate the hormones and psychoactive chemicals that affect your mood. Um, things like anxiety, depression. It also affects memory, sleep, your consciousness. So it basically, basically, just this, just a, a 101 on brain chemistry to uh, to emphasize the fact that there are all these chemicals that affect our mood, our our awareness, our consciousness, and our state of being. And that the these chemicals, these psychoactive chemicals inside of us um, are, are related to the gut bacteria and precursors that are found uh, that uh, we eat. <laughs> So these microbes uh, can synthesize the uh, these uh, the DMT and the bufotenine in the um, in our intestine and in the in the the cell walls and um, it generates all sorts of things like not only these uh, the DMT but um, norepinephrine, dopamine, acetylcholine, etc., etc., etc. And um, to a certain degree, we're not we're not very well educated on how we can influence our gut microbiome. There's trillions of bacteria, of microbes inside, living inside our uh, intestines, you know, in our guts. And for the most part, we're pretty unaware. See, for for conscious beings who are aware, have awareness, we're pretty unaware of what's going on there. But um, if the eye deep inside the self is aware of that, it can then therefore interact with that by choosing to eat and drink certain things or not eat and drink certain things. But we don't really do that so much. Maybe some people eat uh, yogurt, <laughs> right? Like, uh, or they eat uh, sauerkraut, or they they'll uh, eat the uh, prebiotics like the uh, Jerusalem artichoke or the uh, they'll make themselves a uh, chicory root tea but uh, you know because they're biohacking into their mood but for the most part people are unaware as they guzzle antibiotics and kill uh, their microbiome and uh, create uh, dysbiosis and therefore have mental uh, health problems it's related to consciousness this is where I'm going with this here and um, so the question also here and I'm going to move on and we're going to walk a little bit around and I'll show you some plants here in the garden 
um, talk about more like I'll relate it to the gardening experience but uh, this is just before a little bit of theory before uh, before walking going for a walk about um, these non-corporeal beings you, you, you could choose to believe in them or not I mean if you believe in God then obviously you believe that there's there are non-corporeal conscious beings out there <laughs> And uh, if you believe in the devil also, you know, uh, believe it or not, you know, but it's, uh, I know, I know myself personally that this, this, these non-corporeal beings exist. Um, you choose not to believe it, then, then there's a part of your consciousness that you are uh, negating. You are not taking into account certain aspects. If you if you cling to the materialistic paradigm in your laboratory and you want to understand consciousness and you're not factoring in the influence of non-corporeal beings well you're missing one of the four elements and you and so I mean for example like those people who want to program artificial intelligence and say yeah one day computers will have consciousness I, I think not it will be partial maybe but not really it it'll be like an emulation of uh, consciousness it won't be consciousness so these non-corporeal beings really the question is to what degree are we being influenced by them okay because if face it let's face it you you and I are being influenced by non-corporeal beings constantly now those people who have faith in religion they they can't deny it because they'd be like well yeah I mean I'm under the influence of God right God God has a plan and and I'm part of the plan and therefore I am influenced by this non corporeal being called God or Jesus or uh, Allah or whatever like uh, Krishna right the like, the Hindus they 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 certainly believe in the fact that non corporeal demigods and gods are influencing the everyday life and therefore them their lives but if you don't believe in God you know then there are still other uh, other things like thought forms you know ideas egregores archons these are the uh, this is how you uh, influence people through ideas right an idea is almost like a living being it's it's, it doesn't have self-awareness, but it, it can propagate and disseminate and influence life, living beings, i.e. humans, and uh, it, it, they reproduce. It's like it, it's almost like a living being, an idea. Which is why, you know, like this whole manipulation of the mind through uh, suggestions, you know, marketing, TV adverts, uh, music, um, Politicians' speeches, you know, everything, all of these is words, words, ideas, infecting minds, uh, influencing uh, the consciousness, the awareness, and the reality of people. So, in any event, let's just take it for, uh, let's just start with the concept that there are non corporeal beings that influence, influence us, okay? Now, how do they influence us? Well, it seems, it seems to me that there are some people that are much more influenced or influenceable uh, than others. Now, there are certain people that are schizophrenic and they are hearing voices in their heads. There are, now, there are some uh, doctors out there, very few, but some that have the experience and have talked to enough of these schizophrenics that they know that the um, the voices they hear in their heads are are uh, non corporeal beings whispering to them, and they are very very uh, persuasive. And others are like, no, it's just chemicals in the brain. Well, they're linked. They are linked. See, because the uh, psychoactive chemicals in your brains, these entro entrogens, anthrogens they can orpo they open portals and put us into communication with the uh, spiritual domains 
these chemicals that are inside of us are regulating our relationship with the non-corporeal beings. And this is scary because it's not just good for the good. It's not like, oh yeah, you know, we've got DMT and therefore we're we're in the, the we're in the relationship with all these good beings. No, there's also the the non-corporeal douchebags out there uh, that are uh, that are playing uh, whatever they're playing their games, whatever they're doing is not necessarily beneficial for for you, uh, for me. Uh, and it creates quote mental illness right which is which is just a deviation from normal from typical i mean uh if everyone if everyone had these portals open constantly our reality would be completely different and we would all be quote schizophrenic and then that would be completely normal <laughs> but it's the fact that these portals are closed and for for the most part that we don't actually uh, know we're being influenced and we're all pretty much on the same page and we're dialing in the same the same reality but these um, we're aware at the same level now so these um, one of the things that's very interesting here is how the gut bacteria are actually playing a role in preventing the opening of these portals and which means they are protectors of your of the sanctity of your uh, of your integrity <laughs> the self within the eye who's at peace and living a calm uh, reflective awareness not being so much under the direct influence of all these beings. So, um, so yeah, the gut bacteria, um, they are, they play a role of not only do they synthesize um, precursors, enzymes and all and whatnot in order to produce mind-altering psychoactive chemicals which means they're influencing your mood your anxiety and all that but they are also at the same time um, preventing psychosis they are also preventing certain chemicals from overdosing you and those are the um, that's because some of these gut bacteria are producing what they call MAOs, the uh, monoamide oxidase inhibitors. No, monoamide oxidase. And this this monoamine oxidase basically it clips the amine part of a lot of these psychoactive chemicals. And so it's like uh, the they're, it's like the gut bacteria are produce are producing scissors that are cutting the, sh the the tops off of a lot of these chemicals that would that would uh, influence your your mental health, <laughs> to put it bluntly. So they're kind of like a um, a buffer. Now, if you don't have these bacteria then you you losing that regulation like the regulating aspect of that and so whatever whatever it is that you are ingesting it or whatever it is that is produced by another series of microbes is just is unregulated is un is just go straight into your uh, your nervous system and it produces uh, or your brain and it produces whatever um, whatever impacts in your state of awareness, in your mood, your consciousness, your and um, and because there's a link there between the non-corporeal entities and these chemicals, these spirit opening chemicals, then uh, you lose a certain you learn you you lose the uh, buffering capacity of your of the system to the influence of the uh, external beings, right? I mean, does that make sense, right? Now, 
there are certain things that okay for example people who take ayahuasca they know about this stuff because there's the um when you take ayahuasca it's a brew that's that is very complex to make but it requires a vine and another plant that um, has some uh, DMT in it and the uh, the vine one one is the DMT which is the anthogen but the other one is a um, monoamine oxidase inhibitor okay an M A O I and that inhibitor when it's part of the brew and when you when you ingest this ayahuasca brew basically it's it's inactivating those enzymes that would cut the amines of part of the DMT and then you wouldn't have this psychedelic experience okay basically if you were to take the DMT without the MOAI the vine that's in the brew if you were just to take the M the DMT you wouldn't trip you wouldn't have a divine experience you wouldn't it wouldn't be psychoactive because the bacteria in your guts would be like uh-uh they're like they're, I'm not having any of this they would be clip clip snip 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 and then that's it it would have taken away that um, the psychoactive uh, portion so these bacteria inside of you are regulating your relationship with the spiritual realms it's a big thing this is huge uh, <laughs> I mean, it's huge to us to the fact that we're all, we're unaware of it. It's all happening at a certain level. All this is happening in small doses and whatever doses it is your body is doing, whatever your constitution is, is happening for you, and it makes you a spiritual being aware of uh, certain subtle dimensions and you don't know what's going on and so I wonder if some people are more spiritual than others because of some uh, uh, because of the bacteria or not right and it's not only that it's also how it's also the influence of the other beings if you're calling in Ganesh on a constant basis through prayer and worship and you're I don't know you're eating uh, a lot of uh, wild mushrooms uh, that just happen to be, you know, uh, have psychoactive ingredients. Well, maybe, you know, you are uh, really tapped into the Ganesh consciousness. And also chanting, you're chanting, you're chanting, you know, all these uh, chants, maybe that's also like producing some vibrations and your pineal gland and it's producing more precursors that are necessary to get you uh, to open some portals all right so in any event uh, let's go for a walk I'll show you some of the um, some of the plants here growing in the garden and uh, let me uh, unhook this uh, from the tripod here all right now, uh, oh, sorry about that. Okay, we were looking here while I was talking at the, um, this is um, turmeric. You know that yellow powder that you, you put in your dal, your Indian dish? Or that, if you know anything about medicinal herbs, you know it's like uh, regulates pain. It's a natural painkiller. Um, especially if you uh, use it with uh, uh, chili uh, chili flakes. What's that? Um, I can't remember the name. Anyways, it's enhanced by the chili. Got some more over here. This thing grows like. You just go to Whole Foods or any store that has some of these, wash it out because they might have sprayed it or something. And then, uh, hey, put it somewhere in your garden. Uh, you barely need to do anything. You could almost just drop it on the ground. Huh? 
and it'll do it, it'll do what it has to do by itself it's got no uh, no worries okay now let me go for a little walk here I want to show you something here's some chia Ch -ch -ch chia it comes back by itself every year bug chia bug <laughs> some uh, fig fig tree poke helps with the lymphatic system all right I want to show you a plant that <clears throat> it's a very interesting story it's I've been here in this area in the south of the deep south of the United States for uh, four, four years, five years, and I saw this plant. And every year, I tell myself, I'm gonna figure what, out what it is. And uh, every year I go on the internet and I try to find what it is, and nope, can't find it. And I'm really good at finding, like, identifying plants. And uh, I asked my uh, friends that are into plant medicine and herbalists and they're all to nope they don't know one said it's bindweed and I looked up bindweed and it wasn't because this flower is a composite flower and bindweed doesn't have a composite flower show you a now this thing is a, like a vine well let's see the person was not wrong because it's in the family of the bindweeds Convolvulaceae See, it's a composite flower. It has many, which means it has many, many, many flowers, like maybe 10 or 12 bundled up in a little pack. And um, these are blue flowers, and they make each of these each of these flowers makes a seed. It's a, it's actually a big seed. And this vine climbs, and it. Uh, let's see if we can see here. It climbs. And uh, it's got a heart-shaped leaf. It climbs, it climbs, and it wraps around other plants. This is a an okra plant, see? And uh, and it wraps and it and it wraps itself around itself. And it'll it it'll I don't know get to like eight eight feet maybe long. Sometimes if there's a lot, they'll just wrap around the thing and they'll they'll pull it down. It's actually pretty aggressive. And this thing, when it grows, it grows like it goes. And it's a pioneer plant. So if you till the ground and, and this, there were some seeds, I mean, that's all you're going to have. <laughs> it's very easy to grow. <laughs> it's, okay. Now, this here, I, I found, finally, after many uh, attempts... And it was because of an African website in Tanzania, the government there, had put a picture of it. And I was like, what? And so, yeah, it's a plant that grows in Africa also. Myanmar, a lot of these places also, like, it, it, it's, it's an international plant. But it's also indigenous to here. It's interesting, right? Indigenous to here, indigenous to Africa. What is going on? Well, it turns out this is called hairy cluster vine because they these are hairy, and they you see when once it turns to seeds, it's just like this brownish, hairy little cluster of flowers, cluster vine. And so in Africa, like uh, they have their own names for it, like bala bala wala, something like I don't remember, but um, the Latin name is uh, Jacmontia. Tamnifolia, Tamnifolia, Jacques, like Jacques, Frère Jacques, like Jacques Montia, Jacques Montia, Tamnifloria. So it's in the family of the morning glories, and it's edible. The leaves are edible. You just stir fry them, you know, or steam them, which means, oh my God, it's just now I have even more wild edibles in this garden. And it's also used uh, medicinally for uh, to help with uh, snake bites and um, uh, other things too, which I forget what it was for. But um, 
well, antibacterial, <laughs> like all of them. But I'm not going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about the alkaloids. Now, let me see here. Each of these flowers will make a seed. Now the seed, if you know about the Convolvulaceae family, you know that the seeds contain ergotine. Now these, uh, these ones here uh, have a different uh, percentages of the different alkaloids compared to the, uh, let's say, morning glory. But they have the same alkaloids as the morning glory. They have the uh, argoclavine, ergovines, the uh, ergo ergocinines, canadoclavines. In any event, that is the uh, same family as the LSD. Okay? And you could extract, if you, if you eat these seeds, basically, you're going to have a, quote, divine experience. <laughs> it's going to regulate your consciousness. However, it's also going, it's emetic, so it's going to regulate your, uh, your puking capacity. You're going to vomit. It's, it's not going to stay inside you very long. So, um, but there are ways to like, uh, to process the seeds so that you could remove some of the, uh, the fatty constitutions of, on the, uh, husk of the seed that cause you to vomit, right? So anyways, it's not a course on how to prepare seeds, but I'm just saying that this here is another one of those plants that that regulates uh, your awareness, your, your, your consciousness, uh, mind altering is what they say, huh? Entogen, the divine within. Now, I maintain that almost every plant in, the, uh, in nature have chemicals that interact with humans to regulate their, uh, their mood, their minds. It could be at very, very, very small, minute levels. But all of these things act together to make you who you are, to make your reality what it is, to make you, your consciousness, what your consciousness is. Everything. These are some morning glories. And they grow here, wild. Um, look at that. They started off one plant and uh, ended up being many, many plants. Now, I don't know this this species. Some of them don't have as much of the uh, ergotines. I think there's in this garden there's more than one kind and so there are some one kind that looks more like a vine the leaves look like, like a vine are not uh, don't contain the alkaloids or the some of the alkaloids and others do so there's I've got two different species here or at least hybrids um, now what else I wanted to show you I've already shown you this plant but I'll show it again this grows everywhere, and it's called Sida Acuta. I did. It was in my last video. I was talking about it as food and as medicine. I did not talk about it in terms of consciousness, but um, because it's a uh, it's a topic on its own. I mean, okay. So what? Why am I showing you this uh, ironweed? is because in the roots of this here and I think to a small to a small degree in the um, in the leaves and stems and the bark but mostly in the roots 
is something uh, called ephedrine. Now, for those who uh, know what ephedrine is, and um, it's a stimulant, basically, okay? And um, there's some more. It's everywhere. See, all of these little plants here, is, these are all, this is all Siddha, Acuta. And it's growing in a matrix of chamber bitter, which is, which is another healing herb for the uh, fatty liver disease. Liver, for the liver. <laughs> so, here it is again. It gets tall. This one, this is pretty much how tall it'll get maximum. Uh, there's a seed pod right here. It's about like four, four or five feet in height. And so uh, it contains the ephedrine, which uh, reduces fatigue, improves concentration. Also, there's also some uh, nor pseudo ephedrine in there, which is psychoactive. And so, um, in Mexico, they smoke the leaves. They dry the leaves and they smoke them like, and it, uh, it's a little mood enhancer. It's like, you know, brings a little zip into your walk. I guess like how they, chew, they would chew the coca leaves, you know? So yeah, um, so it's, it's psychoactive. Now, of course, all of these come with contra contraindications because uh, if you take too much of this, you got yourself a problem. Okay, um, now, see here it is again, that's the other one, and it's growing in the, <laughs> uh, the cluster vine here is growing in a patch of, um, um, Josh Darn, Stevia, huh, this is Stevia, okay, this is like the, um, the sugar, like the sweetener. I grow stevia here, so we don't need to be using sugar. I, I may I powder the leaves, and then I also make a syrup. Yeah, it's pretty strong stuff. Uh, now, what else did I want to say here? There's also something else growing in here, which is um, passion flower. Now, uh, this, this one hasn't flowered yet, but um, there are some on in the other side, more in the sun, that have flowered. Now, passion flower is very interesting because people who, uh, herbalists know about this, and they say, yeah, it, 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 you know, it'll help you sleep. It's, it's a very good uh, medicinal plant. And, uh, but if you read up on this here, passion flower is one of the three main plants that contain these M, uh, M -O -A -M -O -A -M -A -O I's, right? Now, backtrack a little bit. This uh, monoamine oxidase inhibitor is, uh, inhibits the enzymes produced by your gut bacteria that are regulating your uh, the amount of psychoactive chemicals inside of you. Okay, so if you take, if you take, a, uh, make yourself a very powerful tea, or extract the uh, alkaloids with an alcohol extraction, and then you evaporate the alcohol, you know, to keep the uh, the active ingredient. If you make yourself a tea with this passion flower, you're basically telling the bacteria in your gut, stop doing your job and let the psychoactive chemicals through to my brain, to my receptors that are going to impact my consciousness awareness. They're going to alter my mind. So this is basically a way you could, okay, so if you were to take something that a plant that has DMT or if there's DMT being produced in your guts because you ate certain trimenes or 
and uh, you've got the right population of gut bacteria, then you take a tea of this, you're going to trip. You're going to trip because your bacteria are not protecting you from tripping. <laughs> so you can be using passion flower and this is like uh, this is what passion flower does so there you go um, now I'm not going to go into details but there's mimosa growing around here there's a lot of other types of plants growing out here that are uh, that can uh, alter your mind so anyways uh, there you have it this is a um, I guess right now just a, a short introduction into some of the uh, thoughts that are that are coalescing inside of my mind. This is a, a patch of uh, nettles. I've, I, I've fallen in love with nettles. I have to come here on a regular basis and uh, cut the flower tops off and then they start again. Um, oh boy, these boy oh boy man let me show you this these are musk melt they're, they're wild they're uh, I mean heirloom cantaloupes okay and uh, they're they're um, an old heirloom variety and so they don't taste exactly like um, cantaloupe but they uh, but Nine, eighty percent tastes like cantaloupe, but they grow very well in a in this area, which is uh, hot and humid and ugh. And the the other cantaloupes don't do so well. Look at this. I mean, okay. And there's one, two, three, four, five. I see here, right? Six, seven. This one's ready. Look at that. Woo! You know it's ready when. Uh, Hey bug. Hey, okay, get off my finger. You know they're ready when they, ooh, when they snap off, uh, but almost by itself. You just touch the the vine here, the um, the connection there. You just basically touch it, and boop, it falls off. And it's also like brownish, like more yellowish. It's kind of ready. But I'm bringing this one home, and they smell musky. Well, I, probably fermenting a little bit inside. <laughs> Okay, so there you have it, folks. Some thoughts about um, consciousness and... Uh, yeah, the four antecedent determinants of consciousness. The... Um, the I within, the spirit self, the gut bacteria, the microbes in your body, the brain chemistry and the non-corporeal beings all of this huge dance that influences your alters your mind your perception your awareness and and the point of all this is to uh give you some keys into uh doing your own research so you can become an actor in this play Right, and because ultimately your mental health depends on all of this, and uh, your spiritual uh, journey depends on this too. These are lantanas, aren't they beautiful? And uh, to a certain extent, what you are being influenced by, the level of which you are being. Uh, the voices are whispering to you and you can't distinguish between your internal will and the will of the non-corporeal beings the capacity to distinguish between the two is is fundamental because you know whose will are you willing if, if you're a, like a God believer, you're like, I'm willing God's will, but God gave you free will, uh, and also, and that free will depends on your consciousness, which depends on your awareness of things, which, de which is related to your capacity to influence the system, the decisions you make, the things you choose to eat, 
or not to eat, the things you choose to drink or not to drink. And, um, and I also know that we're, for the most part, we're pretty much all, all suffering. Oh, look, here's a, um, wild lettuce. This has a, uh, a white milky sap. And then this is, has some, quote, opium, opioid related chemicals that help with pain, uh, relief. So opioids, huh? Think about, think about that one. <laughs> so yeah, just to end, uh, the, um, you are basically in charge of this play and you, and, uh, and, it, and I don't, I don't have the answer. Like whose will are you willing? But to a certain extent, uh, maybe it's good to have a little bit more awareness of all of this so that you can uh, prevent certain uh, mental anguish, including uh, anxiety, depression, bipolar, schizophrenia, and uh, demonic possession, you know, like, so, and I know I was saying, okay, this is what I was saying, we're suffering. There's a lot of suffering. So people tend to administer certain medication to ease the pain, like uh, alcohol. People get drunk because they can't deal with the suffering and they want this pleasure. Some other people are dying for the spiritual. They're just, they're, they feel this is not, something's not right in their life. And they, this whole superficial mundane plane of existence with Hollywood and all whatever, their nine to five jobs is so boring and uneventful and, uh, and, not, and uh, not meaningful at a spiritual level that they can't wait to go home and smoke the bong to get the uh, cannabis, uh, cannabinoid alkaloids in there uh, to regulate their mood into something maybe more uh, connected to the spiritual realms because they they want that they they are in need of a, con a spiritual connection and so and then that's why people go uh, and take ayahuasca or are in search of the LSD and this and that but um, what I'm saying is uh, we're it's happening all the time our connection or disconnection and we can on smaller levels smaller doses in uh, influence this so that the overall baseline of our existence isn't so much suffering okay it's like biohacking into your spiritual uh, into your uh, spiritual satisfaction <laughs> Okay, so that's it. Do your research. This is a very fascinating topic. I'll continue to make videos as I uh, gain more awareness and insight into this stuff. All right, but I won't make too much because I don't want to end up in the FEMA camp. <laughs> okay, there you go. All right, bye-bye, folks. Take care.